Today I have a romantic witchy decor idea for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. The project is going to be a potion bottle. I'm going to start off with this beautiful bottle that inspired me to do this craft. So thank you very much to my son-in-law who gave me this. I'm going to use a little metal piece here. These were ordered from Timu. I'm going to use some mesh ribbon from Dollar Tree. These beautiful rose stickers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a sealer, some tools to scrape, and a heat tool to also help with removing the tags that are on there. All right, so it is all clean, washed. You can turn it upside down on a glass to drain it till it's dry. I'll take some heirloom white spray that bottle and I'm also going to spray this rose from Dollar Tree. Before we spray paint the bottle we're going to sand it down. I'm going to just use a little sandpaper and this just helps everything stick to that glass because if you've worked with glass before you know that it's kind of slippery and uh, yeah things won't cling to it. We're going to be using a lot of paint today so champagne gold, some of this brushed silver and worn penny. These kind of match what's going on in these flowers, give you an idea. So I don't have a solid coverage on here, not important. I actually even got my fingerprints in there and had to patch that up. This is just going to be a base layer. So other things will stick on here better. We're going to be building this up and making it look aged and beautiful. So I'm going to take some of this mesh ribbon and it don't, Probably doesn't really matter which color you choose. They have a variety of colors because we will be painting it. I just like this color and this is what we're going to work with today. So I'm going to be putting this in a couple of sections and leaving a few parts of this bottle without any of this covering it. I love the texture, the webbing that it's going to give to this. It's, it's going to give it a very old feel. So I at first thought I was going to leave the roses that are kind of raised up in that glass. I thought I was going to use that, but uh, you'll see later I do something a little different. So just keep that in mind when you see me cutting this down. Now I cut this down to frame out those roses, but if you're using a bottle that doesn't have something like this that you want to highlight, just go ahead and wrap it around your bottle. I've chosen Mod Podge in the dishwasher formula for this project because it is very thick. It's like old school paste. This video is part of the Thrift Flip Road Trip Open Challenge by Trish and Kay from Crafting Cousins and Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. I'll have their information as well as the link to the playlist in the description box below. When you're finished watching my video, y'all go check everybody else's out. Okay. So I'm just going to put this down, and it's so thick that it helps hold it in place. I started off using regular Mod Podge, and it wasn't quite thick enough for this particular project. So once I get it down there, I'm going to just kind of really lay it on thick on there to make sure it goes down on all the little open spaces and to make sure every little piece of that mesh is glued down to the surface. I'm going to do the same thing for the area underneath where the roses are. But like I said before, if you're not using the same bottle or a similar bottle, just wrap the entire middle of it and you'll be fine. It's very easy with this Mod Podge and with the mesh to get that extra texture that you would need in a project like this. I looked on Pinterest for some inspiration on potion bottles and um, I did get some ideas over there so if you want to do something that's different from what I'm doing go to Pinterest check it out there's lots of very crafty people over there who share their ideas freely for everyone to see all right so you see how the middle is open I'm gonna patch that with a little bit of extra mesh in just a moment to keep things from slipping around in between as I lay these layers down I'm gonna take my heat tool I mean, you can use a blow dryer or a fan whatever you have to dry this a bit so that nothing is slipping around as I'm moving it and picking the bottle up. See how this is dried now? Pretty much dried. It's secure at any rate. I'll take that same mesh ribbon. I'm going to cut out probably five inches of that, fold it over on itself, and cut it like an oval. 
you open it up you got a little oval patch there and look it just wants to stick to the bottle already and it doesn't even have any glue on it yet so I will put my Mod Podge down you can put some underneath and you can put some on top you could actually put that Mod Podge in a dish if you wanted to and dip it in there And I'm just going to continue and make sure that I have it all blended together so it makes one, well, it will appear as to be one piece all the way around. Kind of looks like spider webs. It kind of reminds me of Spanish moss that hangs on a tree, especially the green one that they have is really, really pretty. But we're going to be putting paint on here so you're not going to see it necessarily. But if you didn't want to use dark paints like I'll be using, you can just, you know, use this as inspiration to do it how you like it yourself. And this is how it looks. And then on the back, we're going to just close in the little space in the back as well with a little patch here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. We do lots of budget-friendly DIYs over here. I try to make unique ideas to inspire you to make things your own. You see how easy this is? You get a better look here at what I'm doing. And don't worry about the sections that, where it looks a little bit pulled. It's fine. When it's all dried, it's just going to give you even more of that beautiful texture. Look at this. I let it dry overnight. Ugh, I'm obsessed. If you like this idea, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up and share it with somebody else. Now, if you have any little pieces that are sticking out, and they will in this mesh, um, especially when you're working around curves, you can just take your scissors and trim those off. Or if you like that, you can leave it on there. It's a little extra texture. All right, so I'm going to grab my good old black chalk paint and paint the whole entire thing. I don't like to do the bottom because it's really hard to get that to dry. Uh, in a speedy fashion so I'm gonna leave the bottom just the same color as it was from the spray paint nobody's gonna be picking up that bottle and looking at it on the bottom if it's in my house I assure you of that but if you're planning on using something like this uh, as a gift to give it away or to do it for a sale then you need to be sure that you complete your project all the way down and also put that black paint on the inside of the mouth of the bottle as well we want it to be high-end we don't necessarily want it to look like somebody did it uh, on the floor in their house. Right? Right. So, which there's nothing wrong with that. Believe me, I, when I started off crafting, I crafted on my floor. I sure did in the floor of my bedroom. But now I have a studio in the basement, thanks to all of my subscribers and members. And now I have plenty of room to stretch out. And it has plenty of space for my hoard, because I love hoarding me some good old thrifted pieces. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the top. It has a cork and a, like a wooden type lid on the top. And I want to give it a good coat of paint too. I took the price sticker off of there and cleaned it with alcohol. Dried it off. And now I'm going to cover that in a little bit of that black chalk paint as well. You can use acrylic paint. I just love the flat look of the chalk paint and how everything sticks to it look at that don't be worried about the little spots where you can still see the paint through because you will not see it when we get done here is a tuscan red this is a stunning deep deep almost like an ox blood red it is beautiful i'm going to be using that on this bottle now don't be weirded out by the fact that i'm using this this is not symbolizing blood this is not symbolizing anything gory don't don't click off of my craft yet, y'all. Don't click away. This is going to be very pretty. Um, you'll see soon what I'm doing with this bottle. There's a theme for it. So you'll see, but it is not something that is super scary. Okay? This is a potion bottle, but it's, it's a good thing, not a bad thing. So what I'm doing is basically lightly brushing this on almost dry brushing in some spots and you can see that I covered the middle with that red because still at that time I thought I was going to use that as like a focal point but if you've ever watched me craft you know good and well I start off in one direction and just I get lost in the project uh, intuition drives me in another direction and so I just take that road and I'm usually pretty darn satisfied with it so I'm not gonna give up at this point I encourage you to keep going in your crafts even when you look at it and go oh my what have I done 
what have I done? Don't give up, just keep going. And you know, it's just paint. You could always paint over it if you need to. And if you have a bottle that somebody gave to you, just go get another bottle. Throw it away and start over if you have to, but don't give up on yourself. Okay, if it brings you joy, that's exactly how it should be. Now, I'm gonna go around all the areas that have that mesh with this red. The parts that are um, black, like the top of the bottle and the bottom section of the bottle, I'll just dry brush what's left on the brush down into that section. You can see me kind of pushing it down and now I'm feathering it outward. Easy peasy. I'm gonna dry between layers of my paints. Makes it easier for me to handle. Be careful if you are using a drying tool that you don't burn yourself. Just be very careful. You don't want to get there, especially if you've got one like this one, like a industrial <laughs> strength. Keep your distance. Keep, keep the distance from all of the stuff on your table and your table so you don't burn anything. You can see how it looks so far. It's just kind of dry brushed upward and outward from those other sections of mesh. I'm going to take the beautiful flowers that I have here and I'm going to start adding some color to them as well. I'm gonna take that beautiful Tuscan red and go over this. If you wanna seal these first with a little bit of matte spray, you can do that and it will help the paint to stick down on these kind of metallic looking flowers. I love these and you know, if you're gonna do something like this and you can't find these, you can do a different type of flower or you can do any type of sticker that you like. I love that these are so textured and raised and I think they're gonna be just beautiful on this project. Now all the little sections that are leaves, I'm gonna paint first with some black chalk paint. And this is so that uh, the green will stick to it. This is just like a little base coat. You could also do your flower this way, but that's not what I wanted to do. So, you know, again, I just kind of went with it and then let it dry. Then I have this beautiful English ivy green and I'll take a small brush and just start placing that down over the black. This is gonna deepen the green and it will stay down in the little, the deeper sections of the leaf. I know it'll stay on the top. The black will be in the deeper section and give it some shadow. So I'll dry brush the cap just as well, the top. Same way we did, you know, pretty much the bottle and those open sections. I told y'all it's a lot of painting going on in here. But hey, Plaid has some wonderful options. They have Mod Podge, they have paint, they have acrylics, chalk paints, tools, anything you can think of. I'm very happy to be an ambassador in their program. Okay, so here is that. And these came from the Valentine section, if I didn't mention that. And I already had them in my Valentine box. I'm gonna go on the inside here. This got a spray of that same paint that I used on the bottle. And I'm gonna go in the deeper sections of it and just paint it black. For me, this just helps with a little bit of shadowing. And I'm going between the little sections here. This does not have to be perfect. It's going to be layers and layers of paint. This will help cover up your glitter if you don't wanna take the time of soaking this to get it off, um, which you can do. And if you wanna do it that way, you certainly can. And then I'll let that dry. I'm going to seal in with my Mod Podge matte spray. Look at this thrifted paper I got. This is very thick and beautifully aged. So I'm gonna take a piece of that. I'm gonna take my, these little, they're almost like a calligraphy pen. They have a very long brush tip. And I am going to test out my colors. So I had a dark brown and then a black and I'm going to choose the black. I like the look of that better. I don't want you to see the glare, so I'm covering this. Go to Pinterest, find an alphabet that you like, and then you can just copy down the words that you want to use in that same font. So, we have an L. Can you guess what this potion bottle is? What do you think this is? You're going to just trace along. And what I'm doing is trying to get the basic shape of it uh, that I'm seeing here. And then I'll go afterwards and make this, you know, my own. I'll thicken some areas. I'll shade some areas. I'll elongate some areas. And I'll add some of those cute little spider webs that you can see there on here as well. 
So if you guessed love potion number nine, you are very correct. So not only could this bottle be used at Halloween, but if you live that spooky life, you could use this for Valentine's Day. Y'all can see my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. It is free. I'd love to see you in the comments. So you can see here, this is very easy. Now, if you don't want to use something, you don't want to use your own handwriting, which mine is scriggly scratchy too, so don't worry about that. It's not perfect. It's supposed to look old and aged and crusty anyway, so we're going to go with my old crusty handwriting. But here's my love potion number nine. I tried to do the water technique here so I could tear it, but the paper is so thick that it would not tear. So I'm taking my scissors and just kind of wiggling the blades back and forth. Just be careful so you don't cut yourself. Get your fingers out of the way. And I'm going to wiggle back and forth to cut this. Now this is not going to be a tag that hangs off the bottle. It's going to be a little bit different, but it's going to be on there. I'll continue around and just kind of you know, squiggly cut. You can get those scissors that have the blades with the little, they're kind of serrated. And you could certainly do that if you wanted to. I'm going to take this beautiful label that we have here. I'll take a little bit of water, a little bit of, of this antiquing wax, and then I'll go over the project around all of my little edges, kind of brushing it around so that the bottom and the top uh, have sort of the same finish. Now this paper naturally had a darker edge up there where you can see the word love and I like the look of that so I'm going to try to replicate that as close as possible down here on the bottom and it kind of accentuates the little I guess you could say tear marks or their actual cut marks but you know aged whatever marks you get what I'm saying. I'm going to go around there and do that on the top and the bottom to try to get it uh, fairly equal. Okay, so we're going to set that aside and let it dry. And I'll take these roses. They're going to need another coat of paint, so don't be disturbed by the fact that they don't match yet. I'll grab that same Mod Podge, and I'm going to put it in the center of the flower. I'm just using a, a sponge brush here, brush here. Sorry about that. Blah, blah, blah. And I am going to add hot glue around the outside. Now, they have a strong adhesive, but they're not going to stay down on the surface unless you do something stronger. If you want to use E6000, rather than using hot glue, that's probably the best option. But to get this video out for you guys, I'm going to do this in a way that is more timely so that everybody can see it. All right. I'm pressing it, pressing it, pressing it. You can see how long I'm holding it. And it will grab underneath on the layers of that mesh that we put on there, which I absolutely love because there's no way this would stick to a glass bottle otherwise. Uh, well, it might, but it's gonna take a lot of work. Now I'll do the same thing. I'm trying to center it in the middle. I don't wanna put it too gloppy because when you press it down, it will ooze out from underneath. So I don't wanna do that, but I do wanna have enough in there that it will stay in there for a long time. And I feel like with this formula of Mod Podge, it's gonna stay exactly where we want it. I'm going to put this almost in a swag across the bottle. You, you kind of get the idea here. You kind of see how it's going to go. We'll put the next one up here. And it's the exact same process. If you don't like roses and maybe you're not doing love potion or maybe you are doing love potion and you want to use hearts instead you can certainly do that but i love the sort of the victorian and the romantic side of this and it's also got that goth look it's just it's elegant i think in the end it's so beautiful and uh yeah I, so i hope you do stick around to the end so you can see how this looks i know with a playlist we got lots of folks to watch and support but i i really believe it's worth it it's such a good way to support the people that you really enjoy um and my friends trish and Kay and sammy they have worked hard on these these get-togethers these collaborations and they bring so much joy and fun to so many of us crafters we really look forward to it and I always enjoy when I'm able to craft with them so um, thanks again to y'all for coordinating and putting this stuff together okay so you can bend these I don't know if I mentioned that before but you can kind of bend them a little bit and that's going to help you get that curve also cutting into them in a couple of 
inconspicuous places, maybe where there's already an indention, will help to lay that down over the curve so that it doesn't try to pull back up once you have it glued down. I'm going to press it down and hold it in place. I showed you the whole process of that because I want you to understand how important it is to hold that down until that, that hot glue or your super glue has a chance to dry. I'm going to put another one up here on the bottle, but because the swag's in the other direction, I'm going to add it on the top on the other side. Same process, and I did take a little cut there so that it would, it's a little long, and I want to make sure it fit between the lip and the curve of the bottle, where the neck goes down into the curve of the bottle. Now, if you want to use, leave your glue strings in there, you can. It's extra texture. It's not going to hurt anything for sure. So the same brush that I had the had some black on from the leaves, I'm using that same brush in the red, and I'm going back over my roses here. And it's going to make this look like more like part of the bottle. Look how beautiful, because the black comes out and the red comes out, and it gives shading on the side, and it's just, ugh. I know you are tired of hearing me talk about the color, but it's so pretty. Okay. I'm a fire sign. If y'all want to know, yes, I'm an Aries, so I enjoy earthy tones and, and hot, hot colors. Okay, look at that. Oh, love, love, love it. Now I'm going to take my antiquing wax and I'm just going to stipple on a little bit of that on top of my love potion sign. So I want to make it look a little more crusty and old. Then I'll use my tarnished silver alcohol spray. Give it a few little spritz. Put some little dots and aging on it. Look at that. Yes. Let that dry. Just set it aside and let it dry while we work on the next part of our painting. I took a little bit of regular Mod Podge and water, about half and half. I wanted to kind of, well, no, probably not half and half. More like maybe a fourth of water to the Mod Podge. And then I'm adding a little bit of the paints that I showed you before to each of the cups because I want to thin the paints down. My poor gold. I need a new bottle. I'm going to shake that up. I'm going to spray it in there or squeeze it in there. And I'm probably putting maybe, maybe a half a teaspoon, probably not even that much in there. You know, just a good squirt. I'm going to add the Tuscan Red to that copper because I want my, I want a metallic looking red and I don't have one. So we're going to make it. I've got my turntable. I've glued a paper plate down. I've got a little vase thingy, a little thing to put underneath it so that it is held up, and we're gonna start pouring that paint, y'all. Yes, I have never done a paint pour, and I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but this worked for me, so hopefully you can use this idea for it to work for you. I want this bottle to be so old looking and look like whoever owned it has been desperately seeking love for so long that she or he has used the heck out of this bottle. It has so many spills down it, it's been just used forever. Perhaps it's in an apothecary and the lady who is trying to make everyone's dreams come true has just doled this out constantly over the millennia. And it's just crusty. It's just crusty. It's got drips all over it. So when I put the copper and red down, of course it looks red and copper, you know, almost immediately the color that it's gonna be, but it will change color when it dries. I decided to add some of my chalk paint to the silver just to darken it up a little bit. You're gonna have to play around with the consistency when you do this to see if you need to add more water or if you need to add more of your Mod Podge. I'm gonna put this on after my red is dry. My first layer I won't dry, but I'm not going to thoroughly dry in between my second two layers. I'm gonna dry a little bit. You can see what I'm doing here. This one's a little bit thinner. And then I am going to take the other color, that champagne, and I put right on here, my gold. And so that's gonna kind of blend in a little bit. I'm also gonna put a little bit of the red and then some gold and some silver right on the top, uh, the mouth of this lid, so that it, you know, looks like, of course, if you pour something, it gets on the mouth of the lid, right? Or not the lid, the, <laughs> the mouth of the bottle. <laughs> oh my, someone needs more coffee. <sighs> okay, so I did that there. I'm going to let that dry also. Just, you know, kind of here and there. 
And then of course, whatever treatment we use on the rest of the bottle needs to be on our lid too. So I'm just gonna use my little pouncer here and just put a little bit of that on here. It looks kind of bubbly, um, but that, that'll go away whenever it's starting to dry. I'll grab those same colors that we mixed up here and I'm gonna grab that rose and go back over the rose with it. Is it necessary to do this many layers of paint on any project? If you want to achieve this look, then yes, it is necessary. This project, you're not going to do in 20 minutes. But to me, it's worth it. It is going to be so worth it when you see it. I promise you, I promise you, I'm not going to let you down on this one, y'all. I'm not going to let you down. Okay, so you can dry a little bit. You can shake off your excess, and then you can put it aside and let everything dry. Everything is dried overnight for me. So there's a beautiful top. Look at that rose. You wouldn't have achieved that look unless you took all the time that you took to do that. You can do it. Just because it takes time to do it does not mean it's hard to do. There's a difference, okay? Be patient. To have something like this, you've got to be willing to put in the work and be patient and have some faith in yourself, okay? Did you see how beautiful those colors blended, the top two colors? Ugh, obsessed. So here we are with the copper and the gold. I'm gonna take a very soft brush here and I am going to try to get most of it off. In any of those areas, like on the rose where I really want it to stand out, I'm gonna go back over it with a combination of those colors. I'm also gonna take that same brush and in those areas that don't have any paint except black, I'm just gonna lightly brush over those spots, just kind of dragging it over just to highlight it just a tad. Let's get cruising and crafted, y'all. Check out the information in the description box below because I would love to meet y'all in February next year. And you can see I'm kind of dragging that paint from the bottom, slightly up the bottle into where the black is. I love the drips on this. It's just beautiful to me. All right, so we're gonna assemble the top now. I'm gonna use some E6000 on the top and a little bit of hot glue as well when my glue gun wants to behave. And then I'm going to set that rose at an angle, what's kind of centered, but on an angle. I'm gonna push it down with my fingers and let the hot glue grab it. I found this beautiful button at the thrift store not long ago. So I'm gonna add her to the bottle because don't you wanna keep it on your bottle for love potion? Of course you do. I'm gonna put it right up here on the neck. I'm gonna take this metal piece. I'm gonna bend it almost like a crown and it's gonna be the backing of where our rose is. The color's perfect. I'm not gonna change anything as far as that goes. I will be painting the little cupid though, no worries. And I'm gonna put this right in the back. This almost looks like the rose is sitting on a throne or that there's a crown back here. Either way, I think it's very nice little extra detail. You can add an extra rose. You can do this however you want. You can put your heart there. If you have a button you like, you can put that there. Make it your own. All right, so here's that beautiful top. Here is our beautiful jar. And we're just gonna, or our bottle, and we're just gonna pop this inside. I'm just trying to decide what angle I want it to be at, and I want it slightly to the side. Now we're gonna add our beautiful label, and I'm going to just kind of tuck it around where the flowers are, and I am going to push it down and have some little hot glue there to hold it in place. I'm using a very thin strand of hot glue because I don't want it to show through my label. They didn't have glue guns way back, you know, so, hey, I'm trying to be close as authentic as I can possibly be. And you can see I went over the little cupid there with our copper and gold mixture. And this is how our bottle is going to look when it is complete, our love potion number nine. Let's add a little quick spritz on top where it is gold up here. And then she is completely ready to go. And you could completely leave that out if you don't have it, or you can use a stiff brush and some black paint to just flick that on there to get that same look. If you enjoyed this bottle as much as I enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, liking the video, sharing it with someone that you care about that would also enjoy the content. All these things help to let YouTube know that I'm giving you quality material 
that is valuable to you so that they can recommend more to you. Here is the bottle with candlelight and I showed it under full light so you can get an idea of how it looks. I'm going to have the links that I mentioned before in the description box below. Thank you to the ladies who created this wonderful playlist for us, Trish K and for Sammy for co-hosting. Check out the box below and the links that I mentioned and I'll see you again soon.